global corporations. They have billions that they pay to the greedy politicians who make sure things go their way. They tax us into poverty and we live from day to day. To them we're useless eaters. We don't get to have a say. You want to crack this constitution? Is that what's in your plan? You can take my gun from my cold dead hand. In every case through history, when genocide was planned, the firearms were gathered up and the opposition banned. The tyrants made distractions and the people looked away. And by the time they realized they couldn't get away, the smiling face on my TV says, we should all join hands and help create this vision of a new world order plan. We'll downsize our defenses, give our bases all away to a UN Global Peace Force, and we'll do just what they say. Take your globalist agenda and your new world order plans, and you can take my gun from my cold, dead hands. Well, we've been talking about something as we drive through Montana, which has no speed limit, at about 100 miles an hour. Beautiful. We've been driving for five or six hours when we left uh, Spokane, Washington this morning. And something really, really struck us for the first time. We, even in our hotel rooms on this trip, we've heard the term on TV, vanishing wilderness. There's no more wilderness. I got news for you. Since we left Austin, Texas almost uh, two weeks ago, all we have seen is endless, as far as the eye can see, 360 degrees around us. Nothing but wilderness, endless wilderness. But these wannabe environmentalists who never even leave the city totally are for the international community snatching up our prime real estate. And where are most of these biospheres located? Outside big populated areas, outside San Francisco, outside Phoenix, outside big cities. They snatch up the prime real estate and then 10 years later hand it over to corporations. It's a huge, huge scam. And you guys are getting conned, okay? Big time. Get that whole bill up. All right. We've now reached the north entrance of Yellowstone National Park here in Montana. And let's just read what the important inscription at the front of this old gate reads. For the benefit and the enjoyment of the people, created by an act of Congress, March... 1st, 1872. Well, now we've got a different Congress and a different president, and with executive orders and other things, they are handing over more and more control of our parks, this park namely, to international control, and Bruce Babbitt is following the international edicts from the United Nations and Costco, and in about three months from now, are preparing to shut down the park to cars to certain areas, and you will only be able to get there by bus. And there's more. They're going to make some of the park a wilderness area where people will not be allowed to go. So it's just wide sweeping what's going on. Now let's remember what the inscription says. For the benefit and the enjoyment of the American people that pay to have this park kept up. Not for the benefit of corrupt international cliques who just want to charge us outrageous rates to use our own land. It's all about power and it's all about getting you used to doing what they tell you to do. I think you need to raise hell. The United Nations has no business telling us how to run our national parks. And look what they want to do. Now they're getting control. They want to restrict your access and make you go to it by bus. And that's flat wrong. We dropped by the main visitor center and they sent us over to the main administration building. We simply wanted to ask what's going on with the United Nations and our parks. Here you've got existing use motorized. That means where you can drive your cars and existing non-use motorized. Now, we're, we've heard, and Bruce Babbitt has stated, that they are planning to make the entire park non-motorized. We're trying to find out, actually, and get the actual letter of the law from them. So, again, restrict access to your park. Hey, how you doing? Fine, how are you? Oh, I saw someone look just like you. Uh, we're going all over the country doing an independent film, and we're just, we've already talked to Bruce Babbitt's office, and we were just wanted to ask questions about the, the uh, biosphere designation. I'll have to, you're filming? Well, do you have a filming permit? Oh, there's a permit? Yes. I'm here making my own documentary. Could you turn off your camera? I just want to reiterate the fact that everyone was very polite at most of the parks, but once you would get to a park and get to the main upper level, 
areas that were all very rude. They would tell you to turn the camera off. We would. Then they took us to the back and, again, threatened us uh, with fines for having a camera in the park. And I said, well, I see cameras everywhere. And they said, well, you're a professional, aren't you? And I said, well, not really. I guess I am. And then uh, what kind of weirdos are you? Got me back in the office, called more of them back there. I got threatened to be arrested at two places, and you just saw how polite I was. And then they thought that I had a bug hidden on me or something and wouldn't even hardly talk to me back there. They'd all been advised about dangerous people asking questions. They acted like a military encampment. It was very, very strange. Someone had prepared them. Despite the administration not being very helpful, we did locate the U.N. signs, both the International Biosphere and the World Heritage Site documents. And that's exactly what they are. They're documents of ownership, of control. They have executive order behind them. Ah, now there is a good document, an American document, from March 1st, 1872, by an act of Congress that created Yellowstone Park. And, of course, it was prominently displayed for everyone to see, whereas the U.N. documents cast in bronze were discreetly hidden on the back wall of the theater. So there you have it. Good documents, documents that they're proud of, and then the other documents that they hide on the backs of buildings or on the back walls of the visitor theater area. This is a cover-up. We've talked to the rangers. Now we're going to talk to the common people visiting the park and ask them what they think about the plans to shut it down to cars, double prices, and have other restrictions. We're going to put her to it. It's very scary to see what the top-level people here behave like. And, you know, I guess nobody seems to care anyway, so I guess that's just what's going to happen now in the country is they're going to pretty much take everything from us. You see, if they can take your parks from you, your national treasures, if they can restrict access and manipulate you and, 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 and get you to accept all their lies, then what can they do next? It goes on and on. It leads back to private property rights. And we all know that with the incredible high rate of property taxes in this country now, uh, in, your, in your locales, in your states, that uh, there really is nothing left at this point. There is no First Amendment. There is no Second Amendment. It's all being totally eroded at a rapid rate. And once they get private property, it's the last bulwark of freedom. What do you think? It's all going to become private in no time at all? Well, that's kind of how it works. Some is of the that, I mean, is this a stepping stone? Some of the, well, in the name of keeping it so, uh, sovereign and not private, some of the Rockefeller interests, the turn of the century, they started the first environmentalist foundations. I'm not sure if you, and most people don't know that, but a lot of the big foundations were started with money that, that they put up. And really, it's a rationale. Down in southern Mexico, and it's not happening here yet, but in, but in Yucatan where there's biospheres okay. and world heritage sites, they push the Indians off their land, right. and that's what they are. They're, they're Indians down there, too, the Mayans and people. They push them off their land under the guise of environmentalism, give them a little bit of money. They have to go to Mexico City and work like slaves. And then once they go up there, boom, that's it. That's it. Uh, uh, they're all up in the city, and they put up biosphere signs. And my dad was down there, and he saw... Biosphere signs. He said, oh, well, that, that might be good. And like these little ghost towns out in the country and like in the woods and the jungle and stuff. And then he went into a nice hotel he was staying at and saw brochures how to buy Biosphere. Um, so so kind of what they do okay, is... So we're talking about stepping stones. It's just, yeah, it's just they lay down even more corruption down there. Mm -hmm. And so it's already happening there. Right. And if you look at it, half our debt's held by foreign banks, right. foreign countries. Right. So it's the next step towards, you know, 10 years it's a Biosphere. Then they restrict access. Then they say, well, we're going to build a, you know, a, 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 a rich condo community here. What do you think about them restricting and planning in just a few months, they say, to restrict vehicle access to this park and make everyone pack on buses and, and, and double the rates? No. no, I don't agree with that. I think people should be, I mean, this is, this is a, federal, a federal agency that runs this, and it's our tax dollars that pay for it. I'm willing to pay whatever it is to get into the park, but let me drive my own vehicle and don't ship me in like cattle or whatever. And, and that's, that's, that's what it is. They're shipping them in. I mean, I've seen so many buses in here. It's incredible. These tours that are coming in, and that's, that's fine. It's still a private company doing it. Well, you know, it's those private companies lobbying the interior and lobbying Congress and people to do this so they make more money. Okay, well then that well then I guess I don't like it. <laughs> and 